Christianity rests on the belief that Jesus Christ is God. But the truth is, this is 100% false. And in fact, in the Bible, Jesus never directly calls himself God. Not even once. When Christianity was first forming, who or what Jesus was, that was hotly debated. Some Christian groups flatly denied that he was the God described in the scriptures, and even believed that Jesus came to destroy God. Now I'm gonna show you all the evidence, including in the Bible, that shows Jesus is not God and that the church banned all the books that said otherwise so that they could remain in power. Before I show you how the Bible shows that Jesus is not God, there's a few things that you need to know. Now today, there are a lot of different denominations of Christianity, but one thing they virtually all agree on is that Jesus is God. But that was not always the case, far from it. When Christianity was first forming, there was no such thing as orthodoxy, and people were debating what Christianity even was, and they had a huge problem. The problem was that God is described as vengeful, wrathful, bloodthirsty, jealous, and has no problem drowning the entire world population. But Jesus is the complete opposite, who taught love and kindness. So how could Jesus possibly be God if they're complete opposites? Well, according to the Gnostic Christians, the creator God described in scriptures is actually the devil. And Jesus is a messenger from a higher God, a secret God, the true God sent to help humanity discover secret knowledge to escape the evil creator God. The Marcionite Christians had a very similar perspective, viewing the God described in scriptures as an evil God where Jesus was sent from the true higher God to save humanity. They don't teach you that in Sunday school. But here's the part where Jesus is made into God for power and control. But first, have you hit like and subscribe yet? It's what Jesus would do. Or Lucifer. Whatever is more convincing. It just takes a second. Hit like, subscribe. It's just a tap, but it helps a lot in the world that cares more about cat videos than knowledge. So hit it now. Here is how Jesus was made into God to control the population. At the beginning of the 4th century CE, Rome was divided, with Licinius ruling in the east and Constantine in the west. But Constantine was determined to unite the Roman Empire. See, Rome was pagan, but in 312 CE, Constantine converted to Christianity, and many believed this was done for political reasons so that he could unite the pagan tribes under one belief system and achieve a united empire. Then in 323 CE, Constantine battled and defeated Licinius, finally uniting the Roman Empire with Constantine as emperor. So things seemed to be going pretty well for Constantine. Rome was united, he was emperor, and he was able to harness control of the people through the religion of Christianity, which many believe was a way to control how the population thought so that they would believe they were doing the work of God rather than being commanded by the emperor. But there was just one little problem. Christianity itself was divided. As we saw, there were many different beliefs about who God and Jesus really were. But at the time, the major division in the church was caused by a priest named Arius. Arius taught that Jesus was not truly divine or eternal, that he was simply the most perfect of God's creations. Religion and politics, they went hand in hand back then. Constantine said, division in the church is worse than war. And he did not want his newly united empire to become divided. So in 325 CE, the emperor summoned a council of approximately 300 bishops to form the Council of Nicaea to put to rest all the division by defining a unity of beliefs across all of Christianity. This council, backed by the power of the Roman emperor, was deciding what Christianity actually was. Now, in response to this, the followers of Arius outright rejected that Jesus and God were consubstantial, meaning of the same essence. They complained that it wasn't found anywhere in scripture. So what happened? Arius was exiled, his writings were burned, and anyone caught with them were put to death. As the bishops came to power, all other books that disagreed with their position, such as the writing of the Gnostics, suffered the same fate and were ordered to be burned with anyone hiding them put to death. The important point to understand about all this is that whether Jesus was God or a man or a spirit, and even if the creator God was good or evil, was completely up in the air. It was only because Christian bishops had the power of the Roman emperor behind them and destroyed anything and anyone that opposed their view that Christianity became what it is today. The secret book of John, 
the Gospel of Judas and the Apocalypse of Adam, which tells the story of creation from Adam and Eve's point of view, were all banned by the church. And they all say that the creator God of scripture is actually the devil. And the first two say that Jesus is a messenger sent from a higher realm of light to help humanity realize that they've been trapped here by that evil God. In another gospel not included in the Bible, the Gospel of Thomas, which is all about Jesus, this is about how we are all divine. Now, I've just mentioned a few, but there are many more that all say the same thing. So we know that the books banned by the church and omitted from the Bible paint a very different picture of God and Jesus. But what does the Bible say? The historian Bart Ehrman, who was once an evangelical Christian said, during his lifetime, Jesus himself didn't call himself God and didn't consider himself God. And none of his disciples had any inkling at all that he was God. If Jesus claimed to be God and his disciples believed it, don't you think that that would have been a pretty important part to include in the gospels? You might have heard Jesus referred to as the son of God, but son just means servant. In all four gospels, Jesus says that all peacemakers are sons of God. Now listen to this. In Numbers 23, 19 and Hosea 11:9, 9, the Bible says that God is not a man nor a son of man. But Jesus is said to be a man and a son of man all throughout the New Testament, like John 8, 40, Acts 2, 22, Timothy 2, 5, Matthew 16, 27, and on and on. In fact, Jesus often seems to outright deny that he's God, like in Luke 18, 19, where Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. And John 14, 28, where he says, my father is greater than I. Remember, God and Jesus, they're supposed to be the same. So how can God be greater? if they're the same. The early disciples never referred to him as God either. We can see this in Acts 2.22. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles. The fact is there's verse after verse just like these that say Jesus was a man or at least lesser than God. If Jesus was explicitly God, it would have been said everywhere in the Bible, but it's not said anywhere except in the Gospel of John. Now, in that Gospel, it's never outright said that Jesus is God, but certain verses could be interpreted as meaning that, like in John 10:30 that says, the Father and I are one. Now, keep in mind, Jesus never explicitly says he's God. He says the Father and I are one. So what's going on here? Well, it's very possible to interpret this from the point of view that all of us are God. In John 10:34, Jesus says, is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. Also, the Gospel of Thomas, which was banned from the Bible, is all about how everyone is divine and people just need to realize it. You can watch the video I did on that, by the way. In fact, almost all of the banned Gnostic texts are about how we're all God. The verse in John also doesn't discount the Gnostics' belief that Jesus is a messenger from the true God, or light, they called the One. The Gnostics believe that all of us were one with God not just Jesus. It's also important to note that the Jewish religion explicitly rejects Jesus as God because they only believe in one God. God repeatedly says that he is the only God, that there is no other, that he is unchanging, and that only he should be worshiped. No exceptions, it's said everywhere. So bringing Jesus and the Holy Spirit into the mix totally violates that. Judaism forbids the worship of anyone other than God, including Jesus, and see Jesus as the most damaging of all false messiahs. See, Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, but Judaism completely rejects that because they say that Jesus didn't fulfill the prophecies, like rebuilding the temple, bringing the end of war, and uniting all people. In fact, more wars have been started because of Jesus. So according to Judaism, because he didn't fulfill the prophecies, the scriptures show that Jesus is not the Messiah. So does the Bible say that Jesus is not God? The fact is, it's not clear at all. Some believe it does and others believe that it doesn't. But if Jesus was God, you'd think that it would have been made crystal clear. But Christianity was incredibly divided over this. Some thought Jesus was a spirit, others thought a creation of God, some a messenger from a higher divinity, and some even believed that God was the devil. 
It wasn't until a council of bishops rose to power backed by the Roman Emperor Constantine that Jesus was declared God as part of Christian Orthodoxy, with all books that said otherwise burned and anyone caught with them put to death. But the truth is, it doesn't matter. Who cares what a book written thousands of years ago said? Are we still practicing ancient science thousands of years old? No. And neither should we base our beliefs on stories thousands of years old. They're myths and fantasies. It's like arguing over whether Zeus was actually God, or hell, if Neo from the Matrix is actually the one. It doesn't matter. So much destruction has been caused by these stories, and it's still causing damage all over the world. It's time to stop placing faith in fantasies and instead gain knowledge through logic and reason. So what do you think? Is Jesus God? Doesn't matter. Do you think faith or reason is more important? Tell me in the comments now and make sure to like and subscribe. It just takes a second, but it helps out a lot. If you like this video, check out my video on the banned books that I mentioned where Adam reveals God is actually the devil. If you enjoy my work and ever felt like you learned something or gotten something from them, consider supporting on Patreon so I can keep creating more and better content. You'll also get access to our weekly secret live streams and hidden Discord server, The Citadel. My name is Morg and I am Hyperion.